We've all experienced it. We all know it's there, in the back of our minds, but it's not often that we actively think about it. Maybe we don't want to admit it, maybe we don't know how to interpret it, but it's something that we all, on some level, understand. Minecraft is a deeply, deeply lonely game. Despite all the landscapes, the villagers, the mobs, and the bosses, we somehow still feel very alone. Why is that? Have you ever wondered? Why do we get a subtle sense of isolation everywhere we go in Minecraft? Perhaps I have an answer to that question. Join me for an exploration into why a Minecraft player feels so alone. The Minecraft world is big. It's almost incomprehensibly big. Yeah, we can look up the numbers, 60 million blocks squared sounds so simple, it's easy to say. However, it's large enough that it's difficult if not impossible for humans to intuitively understand what that means. 60 million blocks? How can we think about that? The YouTuber Kurt J. Mack has a series called Far Lands or Bust. He's been documenting his walk west in Minecraft for over 10 years. He's traveled over 4 million blocks from spawn to the point where the floating point precision of the game has begun to break down, resulting in jitters. It's one of the more impressive feats by a single person in Minecraft. And Kurt has walked over 4 million over the course of 10 years. But Kurt J. Mack needs to walk 12 million blocks to reach the Far Lands in a beta version. That's not even halfway to the border in modern Minecraft. And that's just walking in a straight line. Even your decades-long journey to the border would only see a tiny fraction of the overall world. Hopefully this gives some perspective into just how large the world is. It's big enough that it's effectively infinite. No matter how far you walk, you'll never realistically get to the edge of the world. As a player, we are but a raindrop in an ocean bigger than we can ever understand. No matter where we go, there will always be more to discover. We find ourselves in a world where we have no chance of understanding the complete scale and enormity. But that's just one singular world. Even that size is but a speck compared to the entire number of possible Minecraft worlds. That's because each world is generated using a number called a seed, and the number of possible seeds is also incomprehensibly large. There are 2 to the 48 meaningful Minecraft seeds, which is equivalent to 14 times the number of red blood cells in a human body. To put it another way, if we set our Minecraft world border to 16 million blocks from the center, then every surface block in the world could represent a unique seed, and then some. It doesn't matter how you slice it, the number of possible worlds to discover in Minecraft is huger than we can ever truly understand. And yet, in every single game we find ourselves in one of those worlds, a world where we can never completely experience what it is in its present state. But this world is not empty. As we explore, we quickly realize that we are not the first ones to exist here. Hidden within the natural beauty of the landscape are pockets of history, evidence of a long forgotten past. There are ancient ruins, crumbling deep inside jungles. These ruins contain bizarre traps, the purpose of which is unclear. There are huge underwater ocean pyramids, guarded by seemingly undefeatable swimming beings. But these monuments can be defeated if we found the heart of the sea contained within a treasure chest. It was buried by some long-forgotten person who was perhaps looking out for future explorers. Maybe these are the same people that constructed the shipwrecks, or built the ruined portals, or erected the massive nether fortresses. The fact is that we find ourselves in a world that doesn't explain how it got to this point. Wherever we look, we see evidence of some past, some rich history that hasn't totally decayed. The world beckons us to ask questions of it, to poke at it, and attempt to uncover its secrets. Who are the illagers? How does magic work? Who created the music discs? Why are there undead enemies at every turn? Why are we even here? Minecraft doesn't tell us the answer to any of this explicitly, but what it does do is encourage us to ask questions. Many of my videos on this channel are based around this very idea. In the Deep Dive series, I look at the Minecraft world and attempt to interpret what the facts mean about the universe of the game. And while this can be fun, despite our theorizing, there's no clear way to confirm or deny our ideas. Realizing that we will never truly know can be very lonely. So we don't know the past of the Minecraft world. The map is so big that we also don't ever completely know the present of the world, but we must also figure out the future of the game for ourselves. The world isn't static, it responds to our actions. 
From our very first moments, we realize that the future of the Minecraft world is linked to what we do. We break a tree and craft a table, thus teaching us about our two most powerful capabilities, creation and destruction. These actions are a fundamental part of the gameplay loop. Without them, all we could do is wander aimlessly and then die of hunger. The world becomes a canvas, and in order to progress, we are required to paint onto it. And it's not just parts of the world we can affect, it's everything. Every block can be placed, destroyed, or moved to any location within the bounds of the world. This is an incredibly freeing capability, but in some ways, it's also very scary. Every artist knows the terrifying nature of the blank canvas, every writer the intimidation of the blank page, every musician the expanse of silence before the first note. There's pressure that comes with the ability to create, and with Minecraft, we have no choice but to do it. This capability for creative expression wouldn't be quite as intimidating if we could share it with others. And that is possible in the multiplayer world. The shared experience of building reduces the feelings of loneliness substantially. But in single player, it's just us. Sure, there are endermen who can pick up and move blocks. We can communicate with villagers in the form of trading. Our tamed wolves can express that they like us when we feed them steak. While these menial interactions can be nice, it's obvious that none of the mobs in the game are anywhere close to the player's nature. They will never show true creativity or affect the world in any meaningful way. They simply go about their repetitive lives, oblivious to the canvas in which they live. To put it another way, when we enter a Minecraft world, we are the special one. We are the one who has the most power and can do the most things. The world revolves around us. We interpret the past, generate the present, and build the future. We are different. We are special. In some ways, this is the culmination of the loneliness problem. Despite the huge world, the invisible lore, the various creatures, ultimately, the game is all about us. It's all about what we do, and that can be a very, very scary thing. But it's also an amazing thing. If we look at it another way, the elements that make Minecraft so lonely are also the elements that make it so special. The infinite world allows for so many possibilities, the subtle lore allows us to imagine fantastical explanations, and the ability to create and destroy opens the door for amazing creations. More than in most video games, what the player does in Minecraft is absolutely critical. There's a reason why Minecraft is so popular. I think it's because, on a deep level, Minecraft encapsulates the unique power of video gaming as an art form. It's a game whose very nature is defined by the actions of the player. Everyone has a different randomly generated world, a different interpretation of the lore, and a different way they've built their world. And that's magical. Minecraft is about the player. What are we going to do in the game? It's not like a painting where we look at it, a show where we watch it, or an album where we listen to it. Those art forms are one directional. The artist creates the work and the audience consumes it as is. Video games are not like that. As a player of a game, we are just as important to the artwork as the game itself. It's an inherently symbiotic relationship between the player and the game. Minecraft is one of those special games that understands this relationship. So while things may feel lonely, I believe that those very things are what make Minecraft a uniquely potent video game. Few other games implement these elements in quite the same way, and I think we subconsciously recognize this. It's why Minecraft is the most popular video game of all time, because nothing else understands the fundamentals of gaming itself quite as deeply. Perhaps one day a better example will come along, but for now, Minecraft holds a special place in the young history of video games. Or maybe it's just lonely because the music is sad. But what do I know? Thank you so much for watching this video. I've been thinking a lot about why Minecraft connects with me over the past couple of months, and that's led me to make this video. Please remember that this is just an opinion. I'm very excited to see your responses in the comments. Did this connect with you? Or did you interpret the loneliness differently? As always, you should definitely come to the RGN Discord server if you wish to discuss this more. We have a great community there, and I'd love to hear your voice. Oh, and if you like this video, subscribe. It really helps me out. We will go ahead and end with that. This has been RGN. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day.